Hello and welcome back to the channel. I'm out in the garden taking a look, seeing what things look like, what's going on, because we had like three days, three nights of just rain here. And I'm just extremely busy trying to move in and then do videos for the new series. But if you're new here, welcome, welcome. If you want to see how this garden, this brand new garden that I built did, or how it looked much better, you can go back and take a look at those videos. I'm starting to take things down like trellises, but this right here you're looking at is my uh, carrots that I sowed late. I don't know if the birds got to this or what, plus this was a tomato bed, and I've been picking out tomatoes uh, in all the tomato beds for like a month now. Over here is my purple top uh, globes, and before the storm came, I started to thin some of these out. You can see how much is down there. It needs to be thinned, but they're looking okay. This row looks a little bit better because I thinned it, but you see what I mean? I have tomatoes that want to grow everywhere. So we're going to, or I'm going to show you what I'm growing to be able to put more food on my shelf throughout fall. This is the first bed. There's hoses out. You know, when you're closing up a garden, phew, a lot of work um, basil that I have to harvest this is the front bed that had uh, beans things like that I have a video my videos will not be in order I'm sure of it but this whole bed here was full of lettuces and peppery arugula uh, Boston bib lettuce I harvested all I have a video on that and then I quickly dropped in some more arugula that is Swiss chard, and there is some more Swiss chard that's growing. It's just a little bit smaller. Um, and I also harvested pak choy. We have a lone pak choy right there. And then I decided to plant all pak choy, which have now germinated, and they're up. I like pak choy as a salad, um, and I also put it in stir fries. So we do have germination. It might have gotten shifted from the rain, but that's okay. And that looks like more pak choy. Um, cauliflower is in that section. And spinach is over there. Um, let's see. See how my broccoli is doing today. Because like I said, I have not been out here in a few days. Basil that I still have to get to. Um, it has some marks. But every time I look, I can never find it. So I'm hoping this broccoli will work out before the cold weather comes but I do have row covers two of them it's supposed to be frost and snow but it's like the cloth type we wanted to get the plastic type couldn't get it in time um yeah so wow the brussels sprouts over there zoomed with the rain so the broccolis are getting big and they're doing well this is mustard greens tender mustard greens and I do have a video on harvesting some of my French breakfast radishes. I don't know if you could see that down there. And I did plant a few more for right there. Actually, I think I see one coming up. So sorry about the leaves. Um, so I have a few more here to harvest. And I got to get to this tendered mustard uh, greens and harvest this. Okay. This has gotten huge. The bees have been loving it. I just come out and take off the ones that look terrible and save them for the seeds because this just keeps coming back and it's still feeding the bees, which I love. Um, the marigold. This side I have sugar snap peas that are trellising up, sort of. <laughs> Hopefully we get some sugar snap peas. I'm planning on covering this row. Oops, I see sugar snap peas that are down right here which is going to choke out my spinach oh you're not supposed to stand on your bed hold on let me sit you here right there for a minute and see if I can possibly get this up here and get it off all the other things that are growing this is a mess see I had to put the tip in my foot to pull them up because they were all down there 
This is Brussels sprouts. Um, let me see if I have you lined up right. This is Brussels sprouts, two of them. Pretty soon I'll be pulling these lower leaves off because um, you can see a little baby Brussels sprout. Let me see if I can zoom in. A little baby Brussels sprout, hopefully that doesn't get blurry, is forming right there if you can see that. So I have two Brussels sprouts in this bed and this is all red cabbage. Spinach is all coming up. Looking great. Look at that. It looks fantastic. And then the birds. Got some of my seeds. I had to plant some more. So I have, uh, what, one, two, three, four cabbages. That whole half is just all broccoli. Sugar snap peas, mustard greens, breakfast radishes, cabbages, and spinach. And then I have all this basil I have to deal with. This is the back bed that has broccoli as well which I think I'm starting to see it form down there okay so hopefully we'll get that soon and not looking too too bad leeks that I forgot that I grew for shed wars which is a community that teaches people how to grow but yeah and then I did harvest some of these these are Chitoga beets. They say don't leave them in the ground long. They'll taste woodsy. I did harvest some because I was really disappointed after I planted these, even though I'd never planted beets before, but I did try them. They're delicious. So yeah, we will have beets to put up uh, for the winter, along with some leeks and hopefully lots of broccoli. I should have laid it out a little bit differently though, like the front two beds. Because that one row cover would have just covered both of them with the broccoli. But broccoli likes a little frost. We'll see what happens. There's still no frost in my um, forecast. This is my parsnips. I'm pretty sure this is the bed that I constantly forget what I planted. But this is looking huge after the rain we had here. Look at all that. Parsnips. This is... Um, is this another tomato? Absolutely looks like it. Okay, these two right here are my square foot gardening method. I wanted to try um, something different this year. And rutabagas? Nope. Let me see. Uh, this is the white one, and there's purple. Hmm. For some reason, I have kimchi on my mind, and I think that's what I did in this full four squares, is grow the things I could use in kimchi. Um, I have a tendency of keeping for like mispronouncing this one and then forgetting what I planted over there. All right, hopefully this will come to me. This is the Detroit um, beets that I planted by seed that are coming along. We shall see. But this is the tag to those beets over there that the wind pushed. Chatoga. They have like that candy cane effect in the middle. Right there so yeah parsnips kurabi that's what this is two squares of kurabi that one I absolutely do not remember and it's been the year of missing tags Detroit red beets over here this is that bed that's the back bed um, there's my dollar store tower I took my chances and planted some beans in it um, and this is how they're looking they look pretty good. I put them in later too. Uh, this is where all my watermelon and cantaloupes were. I cleaned this all out. You can see a couple pieces of that viney weed is coming back in here. But this may be where I plant my zucchini next year. As I say, don't plant your zucchini in the same spot because the squash, uh, like the worm, can live under the ground. And I think that might be true. Look. See the temperatures here? I have all sorts of things wanting to germinate, whether it's tomatoes coming up. Um, this is most likely either a melon. I'm probably going to see. Oh, yeah, because this is where the cantaloupe broke. Let me show you this real quick. Let me step in this and let me lower you down a minute. 
put you right there. Maybe you'll stay. It's not real straight right here, my friends. No, that's not going to work. I'll just try to hold it. Can you see this? I'm going to deal with a lot of this come next year because I had cantaloupe that ripens. And I'm like, oh, I'll just get it the next day. And the next day, uh, it was all mushy and it was like a total epic fail with my cantaloupe. I don't really like cantaloupe anyway, but I was growing it for my family. Um, I did bust the saw up and go through it. And you can see there's some weeds growing plus another one. I'm assuming that's what it is. Also, it could be some sunflowers, but now this is looking like melons. Well, this is this horrible vine we get here. So, I did clean this all up, uh, but it comes through my neighbor's fencing. But anything that I see that's trying to germinate, I'm just picking it out. And this is where definitely I think a sunflower broke. And this was exactly where the cantaloupes were. And as you can see, there's another right there. So I just pull it out. I'm sure I'm going to have a lot to deal with that next year. But that's okay because like I said, I think I'm going to turn this into where I plant my... See? Where I plant my zucchini next year should rotate the spot when it comes to zucchini because of the factor the squash worm worm um, can nestle under the ground. This is wild onions that want to come up. So, yeah, it's my first look around in a couple days out here. So, so it may have to deal with some starts, some things that want to germinate, but I'll deal with it. But this is that bed. Um, like I said, I have to come in here. This is one of my in-grounds. I have a couple in-ground and I have eight uh, raised beds. Yeah, look at all this it wants to grow. What a weird, weird fall. We've been in the 80s, we've been in the 70s. It'll dip down a little bit at night, but no frost in the forecast yet. So I'm trying to hustle because I need to get row covers out. Look at this. <gasps> row covers out and get things uh, that I am trying to protect protect it before it's too late so this will end up being like I said this was cantaloupe and watermelon uh, this past season if you're new here like I said you can go back and take a look at that um, but this upcoming growing season for 2022 this will be zucchinis um, I had wildflowers over there. I cleaned that up. That's my salvia, which is going to get moved to the other side. This is a weed that I could not get out to save my life. I have to get my roommate to literally dig it up with a shovel. This is where I grew potatoes. I still have some zinnias for the bees, and I have to deadhead. This is what I mean about zucchini, planting it in the same spot. Um, this is my fall. Um, I did amazing on the zucchini. Um, for spring and summer, I grew a lot. I got a ton of zucchini. But you see, that's because the worm can guarantee it is down in the ground. And it went through the stem and pretty much killed it. So this looks absolutely terrible. Um, if you're new here and you're not a gardener, welcome. But you see how bad that looks? And then you just follow the vine. And I have zucchinis that are growing right there. It'll just suck the life out of the plant. Um, it's a beautiful bloom. But I planted all this for fall and I have been getting zucchinis and summer squash. There's zucchini down there growing. Looking good. Um, oh yeah, there's quite a few down there. Let's look over this one. I did just harvest. There's more zucchini right there. Um, hopefully the bees find it because the bees are loving. I kept saying in so many of my videos, like I said, they're all out of order. But I do know that that is a Mexican sunflower, finally. Um, but yeah, so this is zucchini and the crookneck. There's some yellow summer squash. I don't know why they call it summer squash when I plant it for fall. And yeah, so I did just harvest. There's more zucchini down there. So this is the patch, but this was full. 
of zucchini plants all the way up. And I'm going to move this to over there where the watermelon and cantaloupe was come next year. Okay, my cucumber plant was doing pretty good. And it's not now. Looks like it's officially dead. And it's right next to all these gorgeous bees on the Mexican sunflower that's just growing fantastically. I didn't do anything with this tower for fall. And I have zinnias there that I have to get out, pick off. That's where the beets, broccoli are. And a bunch of onions. Yeah. This is where the carrots were that did not do fantastic. I did just plant in here before the storm came. Let me think what I put in here. This entire bed, which I'm picking up, um, eggplant leaves. This entire bed I did breakfast radishes, and then I did a different type of radish. So hopefully they'll be up soon. And yeah, we'll have some more radishes. I just picked an empty spot and planted them in the other day. So yeah. This is the eggplant that's still, it's the eggplant that wants to just keep on giving. It's the eggplant still, I've been harvesting this like crazy. I think I did just harvest before the storms came. So there's like about three over there on that one. But these are getting ready to get pulled soon because that's enough with the eggplants. They've been so prolific. There's white eggplant and yeah. Over here was my whole wall of sunflowers. You can see how bad the wind was. It blew a jiffy top to a tray over here. I'm going to clean this all up. Expand this out. And yeah, it's going to look different. This tomato plant's doing better now than it's ever done. <laughs> oh my goodness. But we just had rain. So if there's a ripe one, you will see a split. Because that's what happens. Um, but yeah, look at them. It was one of my favorite cherry tomatoes this season. I think these were the chocolate um, cherry tomatoes. I thought they were really, really good this year. Very sweet. I think this one's got a crack in it, which it does. Um, but yeah, beautiful. I can still pick some tomatoes. I still have tomatoes in my side garden. So yeah, that's this plant did terrible uh, this of the season and now it wants to look great right uh, let me fix this so I don't forget that I had just lowered okay straighten these out this is where the sweet potatoes were got about 20 25 sweet potatoes out of a pot that was an experiment that worked but now I would probably plant in the ground there's eggplants just to show you there's more eggplants this is all this is hot peppers I did just do a bowl didn't bring these along for the harvest. There's my wild nasturtium going nuts. I harvested off of that. Uh, this is lemon basil. I'm letting it finish. And then I'm just going to cut the whole thing out. But peppers and hot peppers galore. Um, I picked a bunch, a bunch, a bunch um, off of here. But there's still many, many more to go. So I'm probably going to save this to the last thing I probably rip out. Um... Like I said, I got, I don't know, I didn't bring you along for the harvest of harvesting it, but I do have, I think, a video on how much I actually got. This is my other tower, and it's filled with all leafy greens, arugula. This one got too hot, didn't make it. So, yeah, closer to the door, I'm growing some spinach, lettuce, arugula, a couple different types of lettuces. So, as long as you keep this watered. I don't even remember what I put up here. Something green for sure. So this will be my quick green tower because there's the door that I can run to and get some greens as the weather gets colder. And this was lemon balm, bee balm, rose bush, um, zinnias. We just, well, I cleaned this up and then my roommate Took the shovel and started flipping that because on that side is going to be our well, my medicinal area. So this still has to be done and tilled. And there's actually rocks now from the rain that came up. 
and I'm going to put my soil over on this side. That is where my curly parsley is. You can see lids. You see all this? The flue? That's how bad the windstorms were and the rainstorms for the last few days because I have everything up here. <laughs> it even, oh wow, it even took the bug zapper down. The, it was calling for hurricanes here. So I have all this up here because I have all these trays I have to clean up, pick up, pack up for the summer, I mean for the winter. And it's hard getting a garden closed for the winter, especially when you have a garden like mine that is was literally still producing. So, dinosaur kale, lasciato kale, and blue scotch kale still doing great over here. Habanero pepper. Let's talk about this. This habanero pepper that actually has a pepper on it. These two were together in this tiny little pot all season. Didn't do anything. I'm going to see if I can overwinter this. Habanero. Maybe. Okay. Um, I did a video on harvesting from out of my herb bucket. And how do you do it? And what sopranial, what's an annual, and what comes back. So as you can see, still lots of peppers over there. Let's go take a look at the side garden. I feel like I'm going to regret this because I didn't bring a bowl. Uh, the side garden is where the apple trees are. This is supposed to be the fruit side. Um, but I had extra tomatoes and peppers and stuff. This is the kitchen garden. I did a video on Thai basil. So I have all this to still harvest. These were extra cups in my soil. And it actually just keeps producing um, tomatoes because they got thrown up there. So I'm going to top off all my beds. This is that viney weed that grows here that I have to rip all out, get it off my soil because I want to cover each of my beds with soil and clean up, but it's literally going even into the mulch pile. So I have to go through this and pick tomatoes you can obviously see, I told you I was going to need a bowl, my friends. They grew. Look at all of them. There's so many. They grew in my soil. The couple cups that I chucked over there. Like, oh, I'll get to it. I had such a busy growing season that I'm still harvesting things. As you can very well see. Let me try to get in here a little bit better. Yeah, still picking tomatoes. Um, there's a lot in here. Holy cow. Let me see. Can bend it down just a little tiny bit. And let's look together for, I should just pick them all, green or not. But it's so thick that if there's a red one, you're going to miss it. I've had that happen a couple times. Can't stand this vine that's everywhere. So yeah, there's a lot of tomatoes in here. Oh my goodness gracious. There is a lot. And then up there, on the top of this, look at the beautiful flowers. I mean, it's going from there all the way up and over. And that's just from throwing three, four cups on this. You know, if anything about tomatoes, it's a vine. They will grow even if you just throw them on the ground. Um, yep. See, if you don't look, you're going to miss it. Like this one, which is gross. So we are going to just wing that one for the wild animals. Let's pick this one. Put it in this little pile. Um, more tomatoes up here for sure. Let's grab these while I'm trying to give you a, a what am I growing, you know, kind of tour so I can keep um, providing food during these terrible times of food shortages and prices and yeah, just crazy times. This is a side garden. 
two apple trees are looking great. That one's more straight. This one's more branchy. I have two raspberry bushes and two blueberry bushes. But the raspberries are just taking over. But I have to come over here to this garden and harvest a lot of a lot of peppers. I could see them all. My goodness gracious. And we get leaves here um, in this area that are like enormous. That's actually a small one. Um, yeah, look at, oh wow, look at this. See, look at the size of this pepper. So I am still growing. I have to harvest all this. Still growing to put food up on the shelf. Um, banana peppers that are down. More banana peppers in there. What is this one? It's a banana pepper. It's turning orange. Yep, tomato down. I think it may have just broke. I wonder if I can squeeze in there somehow and get see if I can grab it. Don't mind my head. Hopefully I don't knock this over. I think this one, yep, caught that in the nick of time because that just fell. And I'll grab this one while I'm at it. So yeah, I'm still dealing with, what is this? Almost the end of October. I have other garden tours. I just haven't had time to even post them. So maybe when I have some free time, I can get around to posting them. Um, but yeah, I this is my fall garden. And I wanted to better the soil over here for what's going to go in next year. Um, let's see. I see. At least I thought I saw. Yeah, there's more red tomatoes over here. Okay, so I'm going to have to harvest all this. Get this. Harvest it. Banana peppers are huge. Santa Fe in there. So forth and so on. Lots and lots of peppers still. And I have gazillion peppers to process, prepare to put up on the shelf. But just wanted to give you all a late October garden tour of what is going on. Let me just get that. But yeah, isn't that amazing? And then I still have to harvest more. I keep saying I have to harvest my basil and I just keep forgetting. So yeah, the garden looks much different. Everything's not real high and <laughs> crazy. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> but I'm still growing a lot of food. If you have a way of growing food for late fall, you know, the winter. Oh boy, hopefully you're doing it. Um, so yeah, all these peppers I have to pick. That's not a diehard rush though because I did pick a bunch of red jalapenos and stuff like that. I didn't talk about this bed. This was the sweet pepper bed that I just harvested. That's some of the purple top, pink top, globe, um, which are these. I tried when I thinned these out, they was coming out by the roots. I planted some there and there's nothing planted on that side. So yeah, I do have things I can eat for the winter coming out of this garden. You have all the green in the tower that I will be able to eat. And the things that are frost hardy with the covers, um, you know, and the Swiss chard that's down here looks gorgeous. But I'm taking trellises down and just, ah, uh, so much to do. And look at this. This was a cucumber plant and this pot up front. And now there is, sorry about my shadow. There is some form of a squash growing right there. So that is just a quickie garden tour. I didn't go all the way on the other side. I just have so much work to do still. Cleaning up, putting things away. There's one of my road covers out. It's probably full of water. Um, just a lot to do still to get things that I don't want to get ruined and put it down into the basement. This uh, okra plant is enormous, but something must have just happened. The temperature must have dipped a little tiny bit. This is my neighbor's car, go figure. Um, but this plant is huge, and there's okra on top of there. This is the red okra. So, yeah, so that is my garden tour. I have to harvest basil, peppers. I have to go over to that side garden. And I have to fill up wheelbarrow full of my dirt to put over here. 
I have garlic to plant. Um, I want to extend this out where the sunflowers were. Bring it out to about here where you see this down sunflowers that I cut out. Just leaving them for the birds. Um, I have a ton to clean up still, my friends. But yeah, I want to get in there and reweed it. And I want to pull these bricks out about four or five inches. And make the space bigger. What am I going to do differently next year? A lot. And there is my chamomile. The one died from the hurricane. The other one's still there doing fine. So just some weeding. Some plants that wanted to germinate. Things like that. And I planted my lemon balm over there. Both of them. A bee balm. It has to get moved. A rosemary is over there. That's going to be the medicinal side on this property. Nice to have your own pharmacy out in your backyard. Well, out on that part of the backyard. I don't really have medicinals growing in the garden, though. But there's my video today. Look at this wild kale. It's growing like cuckoo. So, I love you all. Just wanted to give you a quick tour. Let you know, I am busy, busy, busy. I have all this to clean up. All those trays. I started tying up sticks because the sticks can stay out for the winter. These are still left to be tied up. That was calcium in that bucket. I mean, look. Just keep it real. Let's go to the trash. Just a mess. It's a mess now. But that's what happens at the end of the season. Look at that. I have a parsley growing out of the trim of the concrete. That's funny. So, yeah, that is my little quickie tour. Sorry about the neighbor's car. My goodness. That's my quickie end of... October uh, garden tour lots still going on I still have lots to do and welcome I hope that you enjoyed this if you want to see what the garden looked like early spring you could go back and watch it from the summer it has been so prolific it's been fantastic this part of the bed I wanted to mention real fast we got one wheelbarrow of my soil down on it before it started to rain but didn't put any on the other side so what I'm trying to do as I empty the beds out, I'm trying to put, you know, two to four wheelbarrow fulls of dirt on each one of the beds. So I don't have to do that come next year. I just have to top it off and dress it and have this all cleaned up so that when it's spring, I don't have to clean. I can just plant. So God bless you all. I hope that you were growing some sort of food still in your garden. I love you very much. Um, again, thank you to the new subscribers. Keep providing food, my friends. Keep growing. Keep growing. Okay, until next time. Bye-bye, everyone.